Hi guys and welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well we had a comment on one of our videos and it was about the little progress bars with Elementor here. If I just refresh this page. Elementor comes with these sort of animated progress bars here. And we had a comment saying some guy was not very happy because they couldn't change the percentage to currency. They said there was no way to do it. Well there's always a way. And it's not particularly difficult. I'll show you how to do it. So I've got this page open with Elementor here. Let's add a new little skill bar. So I'm going to go up the grid and we'll roll down to where the progress bars are. There we go. And let's just drag another one in here. I'll put it underneath. Okay, there's the default and there's the percentage. And um, this comment was saying they wanted to change the percentage into some sort of form of currency. So we just need to add a tiny bit of HTML to do this. It's really not very difficult. So go and put your bar to where you want it, percentage wise, how far, how big or small you want it to roll up. And then what we're going to do, we're going to hide the actual display percentage there. So we set it to how long we actually want it to roll up to. Now we just have to put in a little bit of HTML about the currency. So, so put on the whatever title you want in there. And then afterwards, we're going to wrap it in some tags to actually make it into something. So I'm going to wrap it in some P tags. So that's left pointy bracket, P, right pointy bracket, and after the actual word, I need to put a closing tag in there. So again, that's left pointy bracket, forward slash, P, and right pointy bracket. So we close that in, calling it just regular paragraph text there. And you can see it right there. And we can adjust size and color, whatever you want, by adding a bit of CSS. Now, in between, after the web design, I'm actually going to put a span in that's been, going to become our currency. So just after the SEO right there, I'm going to put another left pointy bracket, the word span, and a right pointy bracket, and a closing span tag, which is the same thing, left pointy bracket, forward slash, the word span, right pointy bracket. And after the end of our first span here, we can add some style. But what do we actually want to put in here? We'll put in our currency. So choose whatever currency you want with your keyboard got an American keyboard so I'm going to put dollars in you can use an alt code if you want other, other currencies or however you need to make it and we'll make this uh, 3500 and as you can see right at the moment it's right after our SEO there so we just need to add a bit of style to tell it where we want to put it so after the N on the first opening span tag there I'm going to make a little gap I'm going to write the word style S T Y L E equals open and close some inverted commas or we'll add two lots of inverted commas in between the inverted commas we can put our CSS code so the first thing I want to do is push that 3500 or actually 35,000 looking at it we want to push it to the right hand side bit where the percentage was so I'm just going to say float colon right and now it's pushed it up to the end there I want a bit of a gap on the end so I'm just going to add a bit of padding on the right hand side. So I've just put a semicolon after the float right there. And I'm going to say padding on the right hand side. So dash right colon. Let's just give it 10 picks to bring it slightly left from the end there. 10 pixels, semicolon. And now it's a little further away from the end there. Okay, so we've got a gap there. We may want to push our text down a little bit so we can do exactly the same at the beginning with our P tags. We can add some style to it. And again, style equals a couple of lots of inverted commas. Back up in between the inverted commas. We're going to say padding top dash top. Let's try 10 picks, maybe too much or too little, depending on the size of your font. Padding top, let's say 10 picks. 
Yeah, it's a little too much. Let's back it up to seven. And there we've got it in the middle there. And we've got our currency, whatever you want. Now, if I duplicate this, and we'll go into this next one. You can change up the title, obviously. My skill up here, whatever you wanted to put in there. Just after the opening P tag here, change the name to whatever you want it. Roll on up. And I'll span. Put in whatever number you want in there. Let's make 45. 45 grand. And put this up to, to where it works for you. You got 20, 35, 45. Now, if you wanted to change the actual type of currency for a foreign currency, like I say, I'm using US keyboard, so it's got the dollar sign as standard. You can always use an alt code. Just going to go over to Google. I'm going to say alt codes. And here's a list of alt codes, and they've got all kinds of different currencies here. They've got yen. And all kind of things so if you wanted to put one of these strange currencies in or even a not so strange one like an English pound right there so let's use this alt code and all these alt codes you just hold the alt key down and put in the number that's beside it so I think that's 0163 for the English sterling so let's go ahead and do that and to create an alt code like I just mentioned Okay, so let's go over to where our currency tag is. Select the dollar sign. We want to change it to that English sterling, which is hold the alt key down. Zero, one, six, three. And we've got it in pounds sterling there. So there you go, guys. There's how to actually change your currency or add a currency to the progress bars there. If you don't want to actually move this text with padding if I take this padding away I want to leave that padding right in there from the top and bottom if you just you can do it by just changing the actual style of the font so if I take this padding seven picks away I'll take this style away your other option so what I did up here is to go to your style go to your typography and you can change the size of your text until it fills out the bar in the right way or something that works for you so that's your other option if you don't want to use that bit of padding for css there and you increment up slightly with those little arrows there that works pretty well there we go so if i update we've got uh, three little progress bars i know the text is different sizes on each but that's the two examples for you of how to use css or just use the style tag we look at it now and we got those progress bars two in dollars one in english sterling different sizes so I hope that explained that to you and I hope that's useful for you that if you've got a progress bar and you want to change it to currency it's really not that difficult now unfortunately I can't put this code down below like I normally do purely because it won't let me put pointy brackets there so I'm going to put this up on the screen and I'll leave it leave it up there for just a little while so you can see what's going on there so you can copy it if you wish what I'll do is I'll put the float right the style I can put down the bottom I just can't put the actual pointy brackets down there because YouTube thinks that's somebody trying to write some code into the site so okay I've left that up there it's, it's zoomed in just pause the video if you need to see it for longer so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.